Hi everyone, I am Adriana Sanchez Perez. I am the former secretary for the Sports and Recreation Department for the Government of Puerto Rico. And welcome to our conversation today about what uh, role the state governments can play in reforming youth sports. Um, some state legislators want to create commissions that study a laundry list of issues such as sexual abuse, abusive behavior against officials, coaches, children, um, training for coaches, unscrupulous practices by for-profit organizations, um, financial oversight of youth sports and sports costs for families. Um, but where can really the state governments best help in balancing all those competing interests in this $30 billion uh, youth sports industry, right? So joining me today, we have uh, Barry Feingold, which is a state senator for Massachusetts. Um, and we're going to talk about some interesting issues because following the collapse of Boston-based Legacy Global Sports, one of the nation's largest sports enterprises or youth sports enterprises Barry proposed a bill for more oversight of the private youth in uh, sports industry. And his proposal would create a nine member commission to help develop guidelines for oversight while examining the costs for families in youth sports and the financial strains that youth organizations have faced during the, pa the pandemic. So uh, welcome Barry, thanks for joining us. Thanks Ariana for having me here today. All right, so let's uh, get to it. First of all, explain to us what caused you to propose this bill, what are your hopes to accomplish, um, and specifically, what about what happened with Legacy uh, prompted you or energized you to, to go over this idea? So a as a parent of three children myself who have been involved with youth sports, club sports, I know the sacrifice that many parents and many youth make to be on these club teams and these youth sports teams. And I also know how hard many of these parents who work multiple jobs pay to have their kids mm -hmm. on club sports. And when you heard this, that people were not gonna get their money back, that the kids weren't gonna have a season, it's almost like who's accountable for that? Who, who can they go to to ask about A, refund and B, you know, what, what is going to happen to their kids season? So when that happened, the, really the light bulb went on and said, I, I think we have to look into this and, and see about, um, you know, doing something. Why do you think this is the right moment to, to have uh, the, the government uh, be part of, of this uh, bill? Well, I think like other legislation, this has been bubbling up. You know, one of the things, like my, my son plays hockey in, in outside of Boston, Massachusetts. And I joke, but it's not as much of a joke as that we start before the professional hockey team, the Boston Bruins. I'm talking about our season. And then there's many years that we end after them. Now, I guess my question is, why are nine and 10 year olds playing so much hockey? And I think, I think that needs to be answered. And like what recently happened with the NCAA with sponsorships and people using athletes in their names and the athletes not getting any benefit from it, there were so many different state legislators across the country that were filing bills. Finally, the NCAA said, okay, listen, we just have to allow this. So I think sometimes when the federal government does not set forth rules and regulations, it's a state that needs to step in and potentially put forward some legislation to look at this. Definitely. So have you had a lot of support from other state legislatures or the governor? How, how has it been received by also the sports organizations? Because I can tell you, based on my experience, it is not very well received within the sports organizations, but maybe your case could be different. Well, I would say it's very mixed. Okay. Every single parent has a story, and everybody has a story of a great experience and a bad experience. And there are some organizations, and we, we had a lot of people reach out to us saying that this is very much needed, and some organizations that said it's, it's not needed. 
And I think what's hard is that people are always worried about there being overburden and too much regulation. But I think the one thing we need to ask ourselves is professional baseball, professional football, professional hockey, professional basketball are all regulated. You have the NCAA that regulates college sports. In Massachusetts, you have what's called the MIAA, the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association. So for all these people who are basically 14 years and older, they have a system where they're not you know, overtaxed, that there are certain regulations about how much they can play. But for our most vulnerable population, our youth, there is nothing. And when I, when I look at that, to me, it doesn't make any sense. And before we get into a m more details about how uh, this legislation might be perceived, I also wanted to touch on a point because oftentimes people uh, associate the corruption problems and greed with maybe public office uh, officials or public service, but this yeah. is not exclusive. Um, right. So how do you think, how widespread of a problem do you think this greed and corruption is in the private youth sports market and and is the commission gonna be addressing uh that kind of issue or is it or is it gonna be on well, the public I wouldn't, or I wouldn't the private for, I, I would say that the vast majority of club programs and youth programs are actually really good mm -hmm. uh, i think that one of the things that they've done is they've really helped women sports especially i i find with my daughter who who's a pretty competitive high school hockey player that club has given her a lot of opportunity that might not have been available mm -hmm. if there wasn't club. But the problem really comes into play when th that profit is what really drives schedules. And when profit drives schedules, the question is, is that in the best interest of, of the athlete? You know, mm -hmm. Wayne Gretzky, who's probably the greatest hockey player of all time, he used to always tell us that, listen, when hockey season was over, I take my hockey bag throw it in the, in, in the barn or whatever they had back then uh, in his house and basically played other sports. And I was just talking to, you know, one of the top hockey coaches, high school hockey coaches in Massachusetts. And he said, I look for the player who plays multiple sports. But now what you have is young kids as, as the early of eight and nine years old specializing mm -hmm. in one sport. And as a result of that, we've never seen as many Tommy John surgeries for kids who play baseball. And once upon a time, there might have been a couple dozens. Now the majority of Tommy John surgeries are for our kids from the ages of 14 to 19. That's, that's, that's not right. Um, and, and I think that is an example of us overusing, frankly, young, young people uh, in sports. Here in Puerto Rico, um, we had the exact same problem about, about overload uh, in play, uh, not just like practice but tournaments and the legislature legislature um ordered the department of sports and recreation to create regulation to regulate uh, uh and standardize how much play time can the kids get uh and we did a, a, all phases of the de the development of of the kid or the youngster um, and we received mixed reviews too. We often encounter yeah. people who said, yes, we recognize there's a problem, but it's not me, it's the next person, it's the next federation, it's the next uh, club to me, not us, so but, but go I, I to think, them. I think, and Ariane, I think that's a really good point, and I think mm -hmm. it's, it's not me, it's not me, but I think what parents um, do understand, and if, especially many of them who are working class families is that there is a prize out there and, and no one really wants to talk about it. But mm -hmm. I was talking to a parent that has had success with his kids and he looked at me and this person was a, a blue collar worker in the sense that, you know, did not make a, a ton of money. But he said, because of sports, it has saved my family $800,000 between prep school and college. Wow. And that's a real number. And, and mm -hmm. we're kidding ourselves if we don't think that prep schools and colleges don't actively recruit. Mm -hmm. whether it's Division One, Division Two, or Division Three, And we've also seen that a sport can get someone into college. So every parent, I don't care who they are, they, they want the best for their kid. And, and it just, you'll do anything you can for your kid. And if there's sure. a club that says, 
oh, we're going to help your kid become X, Y, and Z and, and mm -hmm. become the best. They're going to go for yeah. that. You're going to do that. That's right. Yeah. So that's why I believe we do need more uh, commissions or entities or organizations that can uh, oversee how the private sector is, is working and, yeah. and developing the, the kids. So for your commission that you're proposing, what might oversight look like to try to address uh, some of these issues? Well, one of the things we're, we're really trying to do is we're trying to get a unique group of people mm -hmm. that has diverse views. So, um, you know, it could be someone from public health. We want a, you know, I love to, we have a bunch of Olympians from Massachusetts um, that have had success, that have played at the highest levels. I love to get their perspective. I love to hear what they say. Uh, I'd also like to get longtime coaches that have seen many players come through their system. Uh, and I think it'd be helpful just to get parents too. So what the commission we want to do mm -hmm. is to come forward with an idea. And maybe we have a more formal commission that basically oversees similar like what you've done um, in Puerto Rico. So mm -hmm. I think I think what we really want to do is we really want the best and brightest to come forward and say, okay, what mm -hmm. if we were to try to have some oversight on youth athletics, what does a panel look like that does that? Um, I don't want people going to jail. I don't want there any, any type of criminality with it, mm -hmm. but obviously unless you steal money, but I want it to be more based on people coming together and say, okay, what are best practices and what are some things that we can do to really move the needle? And would this commission be funded um, or or would it be volunteer? Uh, where would funding come I think, from? I think that is something that we're still looking at. Um, okay. You know, we, we do have things where like we fund a gaming commission, we fund a ca yeah. cannabis commission. So it is possible this could be funded, but I think that's something we're still taking a look at. Um, in Puerto Rico, our experience has been that to enforce the regulations, obviously there's a state agency who has the obligation to impl create and impl implement uh, sports public policy. So it's a little bit different from, from Massachusetts. But what's worked for us most of the times is penalties, fines, suspensions. Uh, here we license every person that wants to be in the sports industry, even if it's a coach, a personal trainer, um, if yeah. you're a club or sports organization, you have to come to the uh, sports and uh, recreation department and, and comply with a set of rules. Um, but the only way we can make them do it is if we have uh, penalties. Do you think that yeah. that's something you, it could work for? For Massachusetts or what the commission is trying to achieve right now? Well, I think I need to see what you've done in Puerto Rico and see if it's been effective. Mm -hmm. And if it has, I think it may mm -hmm. be something we have to look at. Yeah. Well, as always, sometimes it works and sometimes, you know, right. what would you say to those people who say that government should not be getting involved with private youth sports and, and what would, you, would be your ultimate goal? I guess if... They say that, then what do they also say to the families that lost money from legacy sports, mm -hmm. that had their season cut short, that have their kids having too many injuries? Uh, I think they need to answer those questions first before they question whether there needs to be some type of state intervention. That's great. For us, um, our analysis was yeah. as long as private entities are doing, the th are doing things right, you can let them yeah. go, but as soon as you find yeah. out that there's something wrong, wrong, I think the uh, government should then act upon it. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, well, I want to thank you um, for your well, thank time. Thank you, Ariana, for having it's me here. It's great. We hope this gets uh, to move along. Well, if you could give us a quick update on the status of the bill before we... Well, it, it, it's in front of the Public Health Committee, and we're hopeful mm -hmm. that it will get reported out favorably, and uh, voted on the House on the Senate floor. That's perfect. We hope so too. Thank you everyone for joining us in this Project Place Summit.